is called Lucky Girl. It's Sally Post, Madame, featuring Don Kamati with this one titled Santa. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Mix. Morning, morning, Maria. Morning. How are you on this Wednesday? Do they still call it ladies? What do they call it? Ladies night? Mommy's, mommy's night or what? What was Wednesday? Yo, mommy's night. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can't hear myself. Yeah, I can hear you. Alright. Yeah, uh, yes, there, there we go. Um, Ma- mm. Mommy's night. Does it still happen? Yes, I'm so uh, out. You're, ask, uh, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I don't even go there on the weekends. How will I do on a Wednesday? But I don't know. I don't think it's a thing. Any- it's not really a thing anymore, is it? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, maybe you guys can tell us, you know. Some of you mm, seem like you are the outgoing types you know, out there hitting the clubs and the bars. But in any case, uh, it is a Wednesday. Good morning. Um, Tate Neville is uh, feeling, apparently he's feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, me and Maria, though, have come to a different conclusion. I don't know if we, if we should share that on air, but yeah, I think he's running away from something that is happening at work. But in any case, uh, Dr. Neville, hope you get well soon. I see you've also joined the live stream for the show for this morning. Uh, good morning to the rest of you also already joining the stream. Mm, quite a couple of them say morning. Morning. Mm. All right. Um, we're going to try and keep it uh, a bit light this morning. Uh, <laughs> you know... Uh, Firstly, let's just once again send out our condolences to to uh, the Bryan family. Not just the Bryan family. Of course, and and the, the mm-hmm. I mean there were like seven other friends who who also lost their uh, lives in. in uh, the plane. Well, yeah, the Bryan family and seven others, including the pilot. But I think it mm-hmm. should be about four families in total. I, there were 
I think okay, it's Brian and his, do- uh, uh, his daughter, yeah. and then a, a mother and and daughter duo, and then a husband, wife, daughter, mm. and then a coach, and then the pilot. Uh, so somebody lost the mother with the coach. The coach, the assistant coach, was uh, she was there alone, but she was a wife and mother to I think three children. So yeah, yeah so it's it's yeah, it's a lot of families. Um, but yes, we know mm. that obviously Kobe was the. The, the star, the of, star the yeah. of the show. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely did not see this one coming. I don't think anyone uh, could have predicted anything like this. Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of sent shockwaves throughout the world, n- not just uh, in the world of basketball, because he was a sports fan. Um, uh, he was a soccer fan. He was a, a tennis fan. You know, you, there are pictures with all this. Yeah, it was yeah, a, a mega, mega star. star. Was, I, I think um, there's even pictures. I saw uh, a little clip. Uh, with Tiger Woods, <laughs> with Tiger was, was was playing. He was playing, and he didn't on this Sunday morning. And people kept shouting, "Do it for Mamba! Do it for Mamba!" He didn't understand. Mm. So, like during the break, there's actually a video of somebody filming from behind, mm. and his caddy Joe had to break the news to him because he was getting ready for press. Mm. So Joe wanted to just, I think, give him a heads up, like, "Yo, oh, this is." What happened? Like, this is what happened. So mm. he found out, like, literally five minutes or so before doing press that... Um, and you could still... He was kind of trying to contain himself. was still very emotional. Yeah. Uh, but yes, big, so he was a rock star, obviously. He was. Um, now, he, the, the, the one thing that has happened, though, in, um, you know, in the wake of uh, Kobe's death is uh, uh, the, the sexual assault case. Yeah, the has, 2003. So yes, yeah. it has sprung up again. Uh, never mind everything that he has done since in his career, in his community, mm. um, but somehow that has become a topic of discussion, which is kind of interesting mm. um, and sort of uh, led us into what we want to sort of discuss this morning. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> I mean, especially especially when when people die. Is it is it really necessary to be you know bringing up some of these uh, dead and buried ghosts, mm-hmm. uh, or, or even in the case where you are alive? How, how how long am I supposed to be you know still be paying for for your crimes for my past crimes, even mm-hmm. though I've done you know everything I could yeah. to uh, to atone for them? Yes, yeah, I think that's a question. Like, is there redemption? Right? Yeah. Is there is there redemption? Or is it, or do you get redemption in death, or can you achieve redemption in life, or is there no redemption <laughs> for the living <laughs> and the dead? I think that's a, and I, and I did see this uh, uh, conversation. Interestingly enough, mm. this is the, what's very very interesting. I I've I've known of the name Kobe Bryant. I've known this mega star. I've known he's a basketball player. I've known mm. uh, uh, little details like it's one of the best players and so forth. Um, I know he played for Lakers, so I, I had some idea of who he is. Not even more than a bit, but interestingly enough, I didn't, I literally only found out about the sexual assault after his passing. <laughs> is it? I had no, I, I had no idea. I, I, I'm one of those, maybe a few people that didn't really didn't know. Didn't really the, yeah. know. Like, I knew he had, uh, like, he, we always see images of him and his kids and his wife, and you mm. saw him as a doting father, and you saw, and I was just like, oh, this is, this is a cool guy, and mm. everybody always had good things to say about him. I'm talking about in life. Mm. And so for me, like, when he died, I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting, and I started reading more about that, and this is when I, I found out about it, but I had... The worst part is having the same, and by then I had already done my rest in peace, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the the worst part for me was I had the same sensation. A same sensation came over me after watching this Neverland documentary of Michael Jackson. Mm. Yes, I I knew about Michael Jackson's sexual assault um, mm. or rape Case, of, yeah, of, of of young boys during life, but we didn't. If we're being honest. I didn't really believe them, right? He yeah. was <laughs> mega star. Like, come on, it's Michael. Like it's Michael, but I mean, he's just childlike. He just wouldn't do that, you know. Mm. Um, we didn't really believe them, and you really, and also this machine that he had, this PR machine. You know, it was like people just really wanted to come out and get him, you know, mm. his reputation. But after watching this, never returning to Neverland documentary, I was like, damn, he actually did it. Mm. Th- 
it was that moment and it kind of just ah oh man it, i had that you know when this king of pop and i mean i grew up with michael jackson i loved him everything he did he was an icon man. he was an icon and mm. it kind of put a damper on those memories if yeah. i can explain and i think it's also the same with kobe like it, it did change a little bit <laughs> your my, opinion of my him. perception and opinion yeah. of him mm. it would have been nice if i didn't know about it but the question is is it right to bring out that information in death or not no i i, I feel there should be some form of um redemption I mean, uh, the case was tried in the courts, and of course, the courts pronounced themselves. Um, it was dismissed. Uh, yes, because she didn't. She didn't testify, and she didn't testify because of his machine and yes. how they victimized. <laughs> they victimized her. Yeah, you know, the media can rip you Yo, apart. Yeah, they, and they really. This the girl was ripped to shreds, mm. to nothing. To the point where she didn't even want to testify yeah. in her own case. Yeah, so she in fact just, um, she took it to the civil court. She sued him and they, it was settled. He paid her. Mm. Uh, it was settled out of court. I, I understand it, it was, they could never really, it, part of the, the agreement was that you that amount disclose. couldn't be disclosed. But mm. there was information that she got the highest amount for that county, which was 2.5 million. It's the highest you can get in Ooh. a, um, yeah, in a lawsuit. Mm. So yeah. She probably got 2.5 million. And yes, she's from a wealthy family, so she really didn't need the 2.5 million. But it, that's was, not it was never really about was, the money. It was, it was about, about the incident. Yes. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But, you know, the whole redemption, because I, I remember even... even um, um, whose death was it now? Ah. In any case, uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, these things do tend to creep up, especially at, at um, you know, when somebody passes on, because mm. they are the ones who are coming with condolences and then others who, who start throwing out statements like, yeah, my day person was a bat or that person did this and did that and did this. It's like 2003, that's 17 years ago. Yeah, and sometimes it's, it's in life. I'm, I'm trying to find, also, so it's so interesting we're having this discussion now mm. because I saw um, on one of these social media posts, some, I think she's an artist, right? Posted a picture with Chris Brown. Yes, her name is... Ailey, who's Ailey? She's a K-pop singer. Mm. Ailey, I don't know if you know her. Mm. I'll show you her, her picture. Do you? Mm, okay. All right. Okay. Anyway, she posted a picture. It seems Ailey is uh, kind of to be seen to be anti uh, GBV, GBV and whatever. Mm -hmm. And she posted a picture with Chris Brown. And she's like, "Oh, I grew up loving his music." Oh, some, you know, some. <laughs> Some caption, you know, uh. and the commentators came for her, like, Yo, you are posing with an abuser. <laughs> I can just imagine the Rihanna memes that were popping yeah. up there, <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> exactly. She had to go back and on her on her caption, and she edited and she's like, She was just saying, I said, I was a fan, and I didn't even know he had been accused of this, mm -hmm. and I would never support an abuser it, like she had to to, to track back basically yeah, yeah basically <laughs> backpedal from her initial <laughs> comments um but yeah it just shows that and when did this rihanna incident happen i mean i don't really like to use chris brown as an example because he's been problematic because even mm. his ex karuchi what Karo, Karo, karuchi. whatever even she said she experienced some abuse some, but uh, <laughs> he does uh, he does have a little bit of a temper yeah issue. he's got not a little bit. He's got a temper. He's okay, a little a spoiled bread. <laughs> he got into the limelight quite early in life. Yeah. yeah, but but even for but even for some other people, they will they will use him as an example and say, okay, fine, Rihanna is forgiven. Rihanna forgave him. Yeah. They made amends. Why are the fans still holding on yes. to the? Why, why 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 do we still consider him an abuser? Like, uh, uh, can't he? I mean, hasn't he redeemed himself? Hasn't he sort yeah. of? Uh, um, yeah. atoned for his mistakes yes. shouldn't we be moving yeah. on yeah and that's I guess ultimately if, if the victim forgives the perpetrator mm. should we also then forgive should we for forgive or are we adjust <laughs> I, I'm interested to see what the commentators are saying I like it's, it's I think it's uh, it's yeah I, I, it's, I mean you guys should come in with the comments stop stop uh, um, teasing Neville in the comments right we know he's also sitting at home watching Kamastar sick, but just leave him alone. <laughs> but take in the conversation. What do you think about redemption? Is there really redemption? 
um, should there be yeah should there be like for on the flip side i remember um uh, um when uh, uh, um uh, president robert mugabe died mm-hmm. or former president mugabe died mm-hmm. and you know, the majority of the comments were like, no, this guy was a liberation hero. He was mm-hmm. a hero. He was mm-hmm. Zimbabwean hero. Pan-Africanist yes. was the, the words they were using. But I remember uh, in, in, in the couple of years, basically, leading up to his death, um, none of these good sentiments were <laughs> anywhere to be seen. Uh, no, the problem, actually, you, actually with Mo, you, brought, you just reminded, reminded me of something. The Robert Mugabe death, I think I saw two two sides and this was actually the unfortunate part you had all these world leaders like African leaders singing his praises you know the Julius Malemas and all these people pan Africanist, our leaders exemplary our president the other presidents everybody right mm. and then we had Zimbabweans right mm. that were courageous enough to say I'm not mourning this man's death my family mm. if I look at my family today I can still see the damage this man has done mm. And then we had, and this was the, the, the funny part about it, and then we had these this people that were singing his praises would tell Zimbabweans how they should feel about it. <laughs> They're like, no, but he's a pan-Africanist. Do you, yes. you, have to, you have to celebrate him. He, he was a hero he be- was a before hero. he became a villain. Yeah, he took the land from, <laughs> forget where the land went to. We only didn't go to the people, but he, he took the land from the white man. You should, you should, you know, and... It, it, I think for Zimbabweans, and I and I, I follow a few of them on social media. They were just like, "This is so weird to me." Like that, the outside is telling me how I should that I should celebrate celebrate this man. Yeah. That I refuse to. I'm not going to. But in the Robert Mugabe, I definitely don't think we should forget anything <laughs> because <laughs> it's like those you can still see. Yeah, but, 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 you know, but then uh, the argument would become, okay, uh, like this, it, it's a very interesting case because it's like a sort of a reversal. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a hero before he became the, the villain mm-hmm. that, you know, the Zimbabweans. Oh, he was and, a hero and, and a villain to some. Ended up hating. Yeah, of course, depending yeah, on which yes, side you're yes. looking for. But uh, uh, I mean, yeah, he uh, the, fir- into a the, fir- right. the first president after independence, yeah. you know, um, a, a, a liberation uh, fighter, mm-hmm. basically. So, yeah. So he was their hero at some point, and then uh, you know things started going south. Mm. It's like saying if Thomas Sankara had lived longer, would he have lived long enough to have turned into a villain? You know what like, I mean? Yeah. He lived a short life, so hey, he was. We, we never know. Yeah. I, I mean, Madiba lived a long life, and um, he's still a hero. He's still remembered as a hero. Today. Yeah, but there's some people that will say, well, he made some mistakes, uh, sitting at the table and negotiating the, you know. Um, at the dignity of black people. So there's still people with those sentiments. Yeah. You know, uh, some people will, will say more like, Winnie is the hero. You understand, in that scenario. <laughs> I've heard that as so, well. So it's interesting, but what, ultimately what I, what I believe, my, my opinion on this, is that I think we must first accept that people are, are human. Mm. So even when you give them the hero status, the superhero, uh, mortalize them, whatever, mm. it's understanding that there's a good and a bad. We're and fallible. We're gonna make yeah, mistakes. We, we, yes, and also, but also now saying we're gullible means that it's okay. We can't talk about those mistakes. Yes. Yes. Uh, we, uh, why should we just ham on the good? Because then you're not human anymore. Then you're just a superhero that had no fault, that is perfect living human being. Mm. But there, there is every human being has a, has flaws. Yeah, that's true. But like, uh, um, back to, to, for instance, for, to, to, to Kobe's case, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy has spent the past 17 years probably trying to atone for, for that mistake. And, you know, just trying to set things right. Imagine with his wife, with his family, with his community. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, but atoning for me is also admitting. And we never saw a... a he made, made we saw an apology, but we didn't really see maybe, an admittance. Maybe he and, didn't and see it in the no, same I, I, way. I just feel like, yeah, that, <laughs> that admittance goes a long way f- for the victim. Yes, that's You true. know, yeah. and so that's what I'm saying. Maybe he, had, he was atoning in his own ways. And I mean, we know that the, the, the Mamba, the Black Mamba um, persona was created after this incident. So maybe he was also, yeah, it was a uh, alter ego in dealing, and he said it himself. He said he created this alter ego to deal with with, the, uh, with this media attention, this scrutiny, this blip in his life that he would hope to forget, but it 
<laughs> it seems to have followed it, it him, followed to, his him to his death. Yes. And, and yeah, that's. Um, let me read a few comments. <clears throat> Bradley Kubisep, uh, here's my thought. Uh, in uh, an event that the victim forgave the perpetrator or the perpetrator is found guilty and serves jail time, then definitely the fans should not hold it against him or her. All right? Uh, Sammy Fly saying, sometimes it's just funny. Not all of the people can forgive, but uh, I feel like if the victim forgives the perpetrator, why can't we also do? But then, uh, so we're only going to go by... Um, the victim? the victim. And what if the victim hasn't forgiven? Like, for example, with yeah. Kobe, we don't know that the victim has forgiven yeah. him. Yeah. So she hasn't said anything. <laughs> she stayed out of the she media. She stayed out of the media. I'm sure she's staying away from the media. So in her case, should we then forgive if she hasn't? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Neville is saying Madiba, uh, a quote from Madiba, I'm a sinner that keeps on trying. Don't stop throwing quotes while you're sitting at home <laughs> in your pajamas. <laughs> yeah, you would slap. Comparamo is on Yeah. Uh, Stephanius James Ananias, uh, RIP Robert Mugabe gone too soon. Yo. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> gone too soon. I was 91. <laughs> 98. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my opinion on His Excellency Robert uh, Gabriel Mugabe is that uh, he served his country very well, especially the way he handled uh, the sanctions situation. In life, you can never appease everyone. He did what? He served this country very well. Have you been to Zimbabwe? And, and no. Actually, it's, it's not really a discussion that I've had in depth with uh, many Zimbabweans. My sample is very small, but the few guys that I've spoken to, not a lot of them were happy with uh, the state of the country. No, no. I, I, I'm almost, I have a, actually, I know a lot of Zimbabweans. Mm. I, I, my, the person that used to help in my house was Zimbabwean. Prior mm. to that, is, I... I, I know a small Zimbabwean community. I'm not in the community like that, but I, I know a hand, like mm. a handful. You have connections. Uh, with yes, mm. and trust me, none of them celebrated Mugabe's life. None of them. And for them, even going home is a painful reminder because Zimbabwe is so beautiful. Mm. It has so much potential. The infrastructure is, you know, everything. But the state of the country itself right now, you know, and obviously they, they had high hopes that this new current president would but it seems like it's just business as usual it, business as usual it's just yeah there seems to be no silver lining and people are looking for that silver lining so it's very strange when people that don't have Zimbabwean friends have never been to Zimbabwe don't do read up enough about Zimbabwe and the struggles there say oh yeah I think the country's left the country in a good state or he left <laughs> the country well no he didn't he messed it up he messed it up. Uh, uh, precious blessing saying uh, sometimes you can uh, forgive someone, but it's not easy to forget. That's true. I don't yeah. think we forget, do we? Unless we develop amnesia. I don't think anybody I forgets. I don't think anybody forgets. Especially when there's some trauma like that. If you've been severely hurt. Just, I don't even think about sexual violence. I'm just talking about in any sense. Somebody broke your heart. You will never forget who broke your heart. If that cut was deep, you'll, <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll never you'll forget. You'll forgive, but yeah. you'll never forget. Mm. So even the, 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 the details at some point might start becoming blurry, but you mm. will never forget yeah. um, what happened. Oh, redemption. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, is it? But okay, but sorry, you just said something and I just remember this quote. I don't know who says it. says, people don't remember what you said to them. They remember how you made them feel, mm. right? Mm. And I think that's, we're going based on feeling. So even people that are celebrating Kobe is how they felt, how he made them feel. Mm. When he played basketball, or they watched him or they followed his life. Mm. It's ultimately how you felt. Mm. And that's why people in Namibia are sending their condolences, for example, to the family because of how he made them feel. Made them feel, yes. And on the flip side, somebody else will have a negative because Kobe pushed them or didn't greet them mm. or etom or has was a sexually assaulted. Experience yes, with, has a with different him. experience. And I mm. think that's, and that's I think ultimately what makes us human. People go off how you made them feel. And it's, again, this is how, why, you, why you don't forget. It's like how you remember how a person made you feel. A person made you feel really good or made you feel really bad or you, you are indifferent to them. Mm. So it's understanding that. And I think it's also just respecting those that might not have good memories of a person. They also their their <laughs> feelings are also valid. They also yes, you should also consider their yeah. their feelings, their opinions. Yes. Um. Okay, but do you think do you think there is redemption? You are able to redeem yourself. I I think as far as you can. Because, like I said, as as far, of course we are we are human. Even in redemption, we are still prone to fault. Mm. 
You, you, you can never be. You see, re- even when you're redeeming yourself, you're not a perfect human being. You're still a very flawed person. Mm. So yes, you're redeeming yourself. You're doing more for the community. You're doing for your wife. You're more present. You're a family. You're putting your family first. You're like whatever, you, what, whatever redemption looks like to you. Mm. Um, but you're still prone to fault because you're a human. And you will still make some people feel like crap. Yeah. Like, like for, for, for instance, you know the <laughs> what's swirling around in my head. For instance, somebody like um, uh, 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 former minister Hansa Imarwa, mm-hmm. Katrina. How would she be able to sort of redeem herself to the Namibian nation? <laughs> build, build 100 houses and give them to the impoverished. But the Christians like to say, and maybe this is the way it is, they said, in the end, it's just between you and your God. Yes. That's your judge, jury, everything. Mm. And it can, and the reason I, th- I think, I mean, in hindsight, I'm thinking about it like, if I really think about it, the reason is between you, just you and your God, because if you have an audience, there'll be mixed, <laughs> yes. there'll be mixed opinions. Some like, yeah, send him to hell. <laughs> the other will be like, no, but he was such an angel, yeah, you know? He, he helped me with this. He, he helped me with this, like, he, you know? Like, I, I mean, nobody's completely bad and nobody's completely good. Okay. Definitely. Nobody. Um, African Dream saying, Moro, good morning. Uh, Neville must drink the panado, his panado, and get well soon. It's the same panado that the president was planting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bradley Kubi said, Maria, I have met a lot of Zimbabwe hostel mates at UNAM as well, and they say as well that uh, the Zim situation is worse now with the current president. Yep. Remember, Mugabe had to choose between his people's freedom or oppression. He chose the freedom, and that's what all African leaders uh, um, led their lives down for, or laid their lives down for. Sorry, uh, But opinions are like belly buttons. Everyone has one. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, will never be the first coronavirus victim. <laughs> In Namibia now, what? <laughs> yeah, thank goodness he didn't come in studio. Yeah, blame it. But yeah. Is Let's go get tested. <laughs> the, the, apparently, the, in Katutura, they are calling it the Corolla virus. Yeah, Corolla. <laughs> Pupkovitz must answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is, in Kobe's case, it's like uh, someone accusing you of stealing something, and when uh, they find it, they never, they never come back for an apology or something, right? I believe that is why uh, she stayed away from uh, the media. Something is fishy. Yeah, no, no. If, if, if you actually read or, or follow the story properly, Maria uh, uh, filled me in properly. Yeah, yeah. He kind uh, of, he didn't Monday. admit, but he, he didn't, uh, if you read the he didn't story, deny. he didn't deny. He yes. said for him it was consensual, but he yeah. understands why for her it wasn't. If yeah. you read the details of the actual sexual assault, you can see why they might have different versions of what happened. Yeah. And he did also go on record and say she's not doing at no point did she ask me for money or was she doing this for money? He mm. did put that on record as well, that this is not somebody that was trying to mm. make a quick buck. She wasn't asking for money. She wasn't, she wasn't asking, asking, for, asking money. for anything. She, this, just, yeah. she really felt yeah. violated. Yeah, she, she felt violated. Mm. Yeah, she felt like in that moment she was violated. And he even acknowledged that, you know, yeah, I, I can see why she would, she would say that. Mm. Although for me, it, it was in that moment, I believed it to be consensual. Mm. Uh, but yes, uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not those, one of those, it's something fishy situation. It's mm. literally a situation <coughs> where somebody perceived something as, didn't, they felt there was no consent and somebody thought there was consent. Mm. That's what it is. Um, Erwin Kahorere, the best apology is uh, changed behavior, right? Uh, 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 Charlemagne the God, uh, <laughs> oh, is that now a quote? Uh, it's not enough to say you are sorry. We have to see the change. I like that. I actually really like it. And I think that's, mm. that's the makes a world of a difference. It's true. It's like, that's why I say for, with, for me, Chris Brown is difficult because I don't see... It's not still a problem. It's not still a problem. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yes, but yes, but you're still a problem. Mm. I would like to <clears> see. And, and with Kobe, I think there's also somewhere where, where some people are still on the middle ground, don't really know how to feel about it because mm. we, they... they People did see, uh, not, that he, not that there was really a negative, not that he was a, a crappy person initially, mm. but I'm just saying even after the incident, we just saw, even in terms of just the family man, he was just a little bit more intentional with his life and his direction and yeah. whatever. Mm. Um, so I think for some people it is like they felt it was, that's redemption enough. But I guess also, you know, one, <laughs> one of the reasons why 
uh, uh, maybe some people still tend to question. I mean, we followed R. Kelly all our lives and we never know, knew what he was getting up to. Mm. And he's constantly in the media and at this party and at that and that. And then you go find out, wow, behind closed doors, this guy is busy with nonsense. But here's the thing, with, even with R. Kelly, <laughs> we, we, we now know what we know. And there's still people that are still step in the name of love. You know, they're still supporting him and they, they don't believe the victims. And you understand? See, me, I don't make those, those mistakes anymore. <laughs> I don't make those mistakes in life anymore. If I know of it, I'm out. You know, a part of that abusive relationship, so called. The music, though. Damn. <laughs> the music is so good. <laughs> like now, R. Kelly. Nowadays, I, I play his gospel album and pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, redemption. Um, interesting to- topic. Oh, they paid her to shut her up, uh, says Nandema Tundu. The, yeah, there was uh, an out of court settlement, but. Um, but I, that was for the trauma and pain yeah. and suffering she went through in this, during the public trial. Yes, of course. I don't, yeah, I don't think it was uh, something that was forced upon uh, um, Kobe and his uh, attorneys. I think they fully agreed. That just, she deserved yeah, to be paid. Yeah, yeah. Let's just settle this and, and, and move and on. Move on yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, 17 years later, uh, now he is no more. I think we should also yeah. let it go. Oh yeah, I just wanted to also, just for clarity... Um, Settling out of court, if you bring a, a, a suit, settling out of court, it's his lawyers would have been the ones to have proposed an out of court settlement, mm. not the other way around. Mm. Because she brought the, the civil matter to the court. Yes. To the court. So if it's settled out of court, it's because his lawyers wanted to settle it out of court. Mm. Um, yeah. That generally means they are ready to compensate and they just mm. want the matter to go com- away. Com- let's talk outside the media. Yeah. Let's just <coughs> let it go away, disappear. Yeah, and you guys, you guys are talking about forgiving, forgiving here. So, so you can tell us how, how um, like the question I was asking, for instance, like a, a Katrina Hanse Himara, how can she redeem herself yeah. to you, the Namibian? Or, yeah. or even, let's say, uh, a Saki Shangala or Bernard yeah. Esau. Yeah. After uh, this whole thing has blown up, how can they yes, redeem themselves exactly to you? Exactly. Yeah, how can they? But also, <laughs> human, human beings are interesting. <laughs> We're talking about, yeah, forgive. Neukom, why should we bring up your part? But how many of you have, for example, exes that passed on and say, Nia, ekwarini? Okay, exactly. <laughs> We're gonna cry, ek full knucks, ni, that man deserved or that woman deserved. Uh, I, I'm saying, even with ourselves, within ourselves, we have those feelings towards other people. We just like, I'm, look, I'm never. It's like that. I really, you know, there's just some done, people you done, have done. no sympathy for. Like, <laughs> yeah. if something bad happens to them, you just are so untouched. <laughs> have you ever, do, you, do you have people like that? I have people like that in my life, not a lot. I'm surprised it took this long for yeah, that to just happen like, to you. <laughs> look, if you're looking for sympathy, you're looking in the wrong place. Yeah, but egg full nerds. Like, yep, I've got zero yeah. Fs to give. Yes. Zero, like zero. George W. Bush. Yeah. Um, Gauss Stark. Uh, there's no need to talk about it because the truth of, uh, um, yeah, the truth of what one says lies in one, what one does. Okay. Um, Neville Boson saying, Nico Kayamo accused us yesterday. Kama, we are very biased. The teacher openly campaigned for Itula. Sua say, Nico. Okay, I didn't uh, see the clip in its entirety the clip was, of the teacher. The clip was in Oshivambo. Um, uh, I, didn't, I didn't follow the full story also. I, I, and I, what I understood from the clip, he was, he was talking against the administration of 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 Hage. Mm. She's saying, yeah, you people want to go, this is the man you want to go vote for. Look mm. now, we don't have textbooks. Mm. It was political. It wasn't just somebody saying, holding the government accountable mm. for not having textbook. He was holding the Hage Genko led government mm. accountable and specifically Hage because he spoke about elections and how some, some people were stupid to go and vote uh, for Hage, especially because even with the fish rot, he was implicated. People said he, mm. wow. yeah, it was it was a long, long clip, but yes, I can. I, I, he definitely came across as a Itula supporter. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I feel as long as he's not speaking, you know, in, he's not on, on duty. It's like if he's speaking in his own capacity, even though, yes, he is a teacher, that is the profession that he does, mm-hmm. but he's speaking. I mean, Namibian politics does affect him one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it affects all of us. Yeah. If, if that's his opinion, why, why should the fact that somebody thinks 
based on their profession yeah. they can't have a say yeah so if they think very little of of the government or of mm. um the minister or or, mm. or whatever if that is all it takes to change your opinion then he, you've got bigger problems to I, worry about i'm actually surprised that it's mr nico kayamo that would have a problem with it because when i was a journalist years ago <laughs> you are still a journalist yeah well I'm, now, I'm, now i'm an editor but yeah. When I was reporting years ago, uh, I, there was a story of him speaking out against, I think, against certain people. I think it was the municipality. It was front page news. And uh, you are, should then, and you know, sh- was he not entitled to have those opinions yes. by virtue of his work in the community yes. and in his involvement in the, the town council of, of Tsumeb or the, the town of Tsumeb? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's you are speaking out <laughs> against them. You are speaking out against them. But now, nobody else can speak out against. Yeah, because you see now, because this is now my guy. Don't you can't speak out against my guy. If it wasn't my yes. guy, you you yes. would have said whatever. That, and that's you the truth yeah. of the matter. I think if let's say um, Dr. Etola had won, and this teacher was saying, "Yeah, well, you see, this is why you should have voted for Hage. Yes. If the continuation would have had textbooks now. You see, yeah. things have gotten worse. This would one we is have messing sti- things yeah, up. Would we yeah. still have had the same, <laughs> if you are a pro-Hage uh, supporter, yes. would you have still had the same feeling about him speaking out? Yeah. You know, we must also remember our positions. <laughs> position. <laughs> we are biased in our positions. Exactly. So. Uh, one way or the other, we have all chosen a side. Yes. Norza uh, Toibo Kapapilo. Good morning, crew. Uh, forgiveness from the victim and acknowledgement of deeds from the perpetrator and positive change in behavior sort of gives uh, a blanket feeling of redemption on both parties but in reality redemption is a fallacy anything that can uh, be remembered cannot be redeemed yes it's, it's, it's like those things you know when your friends <laughs> have you ever seen like let's say your your girlfriend's boyfriend cheats on her ne? Yeah. she comes to you and you get mad together yeah, I am what for tech. Even break up. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah kick him to the curb. Blah, 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 blah whatever, right? Mm. And then she ends up forgi- <laughs> forgiving him and taking him back. <laughs> now you are still left with these feelings. <laughs> I'll result. <laughs> because like, I'm still mad at you. How, how are you back there? <laughs> it's like, okay, she's forgiven him and maybe you should, but you also have your own now feelings about it. Mm. So. And that right there is why they advise you to must stay out of other people's so, domestic yep. issues. I do really love to talk about that. Never saying Nick uh, Avaso. I saw something now. Come no Nico. Prat no as a belief. <laughs> yes, Mr. Kayamo. If you have an opinion, we would like to hear it. Yes, please. Um, I think we should go. This Wednesday is really not working for me. It's midweek. Yeah. That's I'm part of that. That works not for me. Yeah. Should we go? Yes, we're good to go. Are we going? Yeah. Ah, I like Mary. I said, Neville was so in your ear complaint. Yeah, no, lazy comments, no, lazy comments. comments, lazy comments. <laughs> now you are at home. You can read the comments. Damn it. <laughs> um, Mary on point. I had that. Oh, I think as he means, uh, is that maybe not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> going back to the ex. Yeah. Now I'm sitting here with angry feelings. <laughs> and you and then you, you end up being on the outside. But it's not quite... <laughs> it's a problem. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. We, <laughs> we're getting out of here. Um, are we going to be back tomorrow morning? Don't worry. Uh, maybe Tate Corolla virus is also going to be in the studio. Uh, Mara Hannes is taking over with uh, In the Mix. We've got uh, Derkas um, on the couch. No, the Info Drive a bit later on in the afternoon here on Informante Radio. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Um, what's up for the rest of the day? Oh, Nico said something. Yes, what did he say? <laughs> um, okay, come, 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 please, here's the from mm. Bradley. Mevrouw um, Himarwa moet eerst ophou met die appeal goed. <laughs> we were forgiving her until <laughs> she brought back the story. <laughs> <laughs> Nico Kayama saying, you guys having it totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maria, revisit the incident you just mentioned. Mm-hmm. It was after I left active politics and as a community member while the teacher was in school and not outside official hours. So the issue is that he was still employed in the ministry. Is that 
Yeah, I guess so. But so so he's not allowed to speak out against uh, um, his boss. Basically. Yeah, or, or to or to mention if things are going wrong in the. I mean, this is something that affects all of us. It affects our kids. So I, so I, 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 okay, um, I need to under, I'll, and I will follow the discussion even if it's not on 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 right now mm. on the live stream. Okay, um, Mr. Kayamo, are you are you ultimately saying that we can only have a say once we're out of the system? Because he's saying he he spoke out against it after he had left and became a community leader and he feels that, that is okay yeah so in that in that is okay mm. um so uh and if this teacher had only spoken after he had let's say retired or quit his job or was fired and now mm. speaking on the side would that have been more acceptable and and how many times how many times have we heard um you know people actually leave Whatever the organization. So and then, then, yeah, why didn't you talk while you were there? Yes, now you look like you have an agenda. Yeah, now that you are not eating anymore, yes, now you are yes, talking. Now you are talking, yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> All right, I think that is that for today. We're out of here, man. Never get well soon, man. We missed you. You must be back tomorrow morning. Yeah. Uh, it's a big sports pride for you, Tom Arsenal. And on those, <laughs> there's rugby this weekend, so you definitely have to be back, bro. Asylum. We're so, out? Okay. Producer We're out. says cut, we cut.